Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and today we're going to be going over the patch 6.2 preliminary patch notes. These usually forego things like job changes, so we'll have to do a separate video on that Monday when we get the full patch notes. But it usually has all the little quality of life things that surprise people and details on things that we've been hearing about, or maybe even just reminders of stuff from live letters. But it's a lot to go through, so let's just get right into it. So as a reminder, while patch 6.2 encompasses a lot of things, additional features will be implemented in future updates. That would be Variant Dungeons, Criterion Dungeons, Manderville Weapon Quest, and the Omicron Tribal Quest. Those are all scheduled for patch 6.25. So get to do more patch notes when that comes around. Please look forward to it. There's a trailer if you haven't seen it. And the start of this is always just, it's, it's the usual song and dance. Here's what all the, the designations mean. New main scenario quest with a couple of screenshots we've already had on the site before. And question mark, 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 question mark. Lovely story quests. We'll get to see them when the patch drops. Chronicles of a New Era quest, Pandemonium. An unwelcome visitor is going to be number one. And then question mark, 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 question mark. My favorite quest series. New side story quest has been added. Totter's Grand Endeavor. Very surprised to see this hitting in point two. We got this little detail... Uh, about a week ago from the promotional site that it was going to be in 6.2 proper. Some of us just thought we were not reading it correctly. You are going to have to have the Shadows of Mock storyline done. That's the Heaven's Word 24-man raid series. And you're going to have to have part one of Tataru's Grand Endeavor done. It should just be a fun little revisit to some of these NPCs. And then Tales of Newfound Adventure. So players must first complete the main scenario quest. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I wonder if this is our trial series. It would make the most sense for it to be. And I'm wondering if this is just like a cutscene after the MSQ to set up the remaining patches. Because we're already told that the new trial will be part of the MSQ. So just wondering if this branches off afterward or if it's something else. But it says after completing all main scenario quests introduced in patch 6.2. So curious to see if that's what that ends up being because I otherwise don't know what to expect. Uh, Beast Tribe Quests have been renamed to Tribal Quests. We've known about that for a while now. Steps of Faith has been revamped. It's now a solo instance and not a trial, but that will not change the story at all. I'm, of course, going to be using New Game Plus to check this out. I used it for the changes that we got in the previous patch, and they were all really good, so I want to check out all of the new changes as well. That, Thorn March, and the five uh, dungeons that they're making adjustments to as well. This, we were told they were doing... The Return to Evil East quest series is being truncated a little bit to make it more digestible. It's getting rid of the fluff, and that does mean we're going to lose some pretty tasteful quests, but it does also mean that it will be quicker to get through the Return to Evil East raid series if you were to be one doing it later. The big thing is that two of the quests have been removed entirely, making bacon bread and walk on by. They're gone. If you already have them, you can finish them, but otherwise they will be gone. And all of this is just setting up the change of order for the quests and who actually gives those quests. So that's uh, that's all they're really doing with this right here. Uh, Chronicles New Era, yeah, New Game Plus. Ethernet shard for the High Crucible of Alchemia has been added to Rad's at hand. Okay, that's a nice for moving around a little bit. Fates uh, can no longer collect items as disciples of hand or land from Fates, doing that to stop you from using them and not being of any actual use to the Fates. And new items from Gemstone Traders expected that. I assume that it's mostly materials and not anything else of note. But sometimes they throw other things like, you know, like a, like a, like a triple triad card or something. It could happen. So, you know, just have those gemstones tucked away, I suppose. Uh, treasure Hunt. New map stuff has been added. Excitedron 6000 has new loot. And Kambira Skin has new loot. They do this pretty much every major patch, so nothing new there. Granted Free Company, new charge symbol added to Company Crest. Okay. The following addition adjustments have been made to some aquatic voyages. Yeah, they do this every time. Two rank items, areas, literally verbatim. Uh, there. Oh, I actually forgot about this. So if you were somebody who fell victim to that lottery issue where it said that like nobody won houses and then they had to do this whole thing with fixing it. If you're somebody who did actually win the house, but the system told you that you lost and you accepted a refund, they had to add this like NPC where you may voluntarily return the deposit that was accidentally refunded. I don't think we have enough Good Samaritans to get any value out of this. I don't think the devs are going to see much in a way of contribution to this, but, uh, you know, have fun, I guess, if you're someone who likes to give money back into the void and it just disappears into nothing. I have a feeling that's not going to happen. 
Uh, furnishings from the design contest have been added. All these always look good. I'm not much of a housing person, but I'm impressed at all the things they do. It's just not much in my interest wheelhouse. Oh, boy. Tataru. <laughs> uh, all right. We've got the Tataru Shrine now looking good. We did know we were, they were adding a bunch of those portraits. There's ones for, like, all the Scions and a bunch of characters. So, And the outdoor, all the camping stuff and the little... Th this dude, this thing gives me Elden Ring, like, PTSD like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Uh, seeing what I literally can see the exact location on that. The only difference is in Elden Ring, it has a ladder instead of stairs, but I've, I feel it in my soul. I could see the exact towers that those are at the base. <laughs> Newer catching rolls have been added, new seed for flower. I don't, this, this thing always boggles me. I guess there are people who care. It's just, it's always weird to see the flower pot thing. Aquarium fish. That's a machine. Uh, Okay, if you want a waterproof fish in your aquarium uh, that's made of metal, sure, go ahead. Volume adjustments have been made to the gate schedule. Well, a quick glance over tells me that Leap of Faith isn't every 20 minutes now. Yeah, it's actually pretty spread out. Cliffhanger shows up a couple times even. Oh uh, yeah, Cliffhanger is on the hour, 20 minutes past the hour. Air Force One is every hour and 40 past the hour. Leap of Faith map number one on the hour. Leap of Faith map number two every 40 minutes past the hour. In any way the wind blows, 20 and 40 past the hour, all possible. Yeah, dude, it feels like you just get Leap of Faith six million times in a row. Either that or Slice is right. It's literally felt like we've only had two gates with the occasional mix-up. So it's probably a good idea that they finally do this. Uh, registration for Leap of Faith has been reduced to eight minutes. I guess they don't want people in the instance after the 20-minute mark uh, ends. I wonder, you know, I wonder if that's what causes you to sometimes go into Leap of Faith. And if you go really fast, you end up in an instance all alone. I think it's because it's a closed instance from 20 minutes ago from the previous round. So that's probably why they're doing it. They were probably running into instances that were perpetually open. Uh, as great as that was for clearing it quickly without a lot of clutter, you know, it's probably something they don't want. So I think that's that's exactly what happened there. And that's why they're fixing it. Instant portrait will now be displayed when uh, playing a game of Domen Mahjong. Cool. We know they're going to be adding that to a lot of things. So good to see it starting to be introduced into more things. New prizes for MGP. Interesting. New triple triad cards have been added. Those could be what the prizes are, but maybe there's something else. Island Sanctuary. This section we probably don't need to go over. The most recent live letter covers it in excruciating detail. But essentially, you'll do a couple, you'll do a quest after you finish the Endwalker MSQ, and you'll get your island. Like that's it. And then the island will take you through all the tutorials for everything. You can get there from Lower Lenosha, from Balden and Lower Lenosha. Uh, let's see, you're not required to unlock Disciples of Hand or Land, but you can craft, or you can craft, uh, well, it's possible to craft and gather on your island sanctuary. Oh, I think it's just referring to the gameplay systems on the island and not Disciples of Hand or Land crafting and gathering itself. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's just referring to the on-island version of crafting and gathering, that's all. Uh, let's see. Visions will appear as objectives in your duty list. As you realize visions, additional goals and development features will become available. That's essentially just the tutorial. That's all visions are. Isle Keeper's Index is specific HUD for the island. Let's you switch gameplay modes and manage, manage the various features. The mode of it will give it different functions. You know, gather, plant seeds, water seeds, uh, harvest, all sorts of things. You know, catch, uh, pet, all, <laughs> beckon, I suppose. I guess so that's what that is. Uh, main menu then has a bunch of other stuff. It's got basic information like your sanctuary rank and how many scripts that you actually have available. Uh, they're called Seafarers, Cowries, and Islanders, Cowries. We were just calling them island scripts back with the, the live letter. But these will be used to purchase rewards. So uh, you'll definitely, I mean, collecting those will be one of the main reasons why you actually do this. Hideaway is your base of operations that just has all the buildings. Gathering, there's a log for it. It'll be used to make specific tools, and it'll show you their approximate locations on the island as you uncover new locations. Crafting, accessing sanctuary crafting log, create cra uh, items using materials you've acquired. Yeah, that'll be used for new tools and stuff, so you can then get other things on the island. Construction just lets you know all the materials that you need and uh, how long it will last. The first few will be instant. Some construction later will take as long as 12 hours. They did tell us that during the live letter. Possible to plant and water seeds to grow produce. Now, keep in mind, all this stuff is pretty much exclusive to the island. This is not stuff you're going to be taking over to the auction house or to the to the market board to sell. It's, it's all kind of self-contained. And then the rewards that you get uh, will be things like mounts, minions, cards, glams, all that stuff with the, with the calories that you'll have. 
pastures where you'll capture animals, uh, taking good care of these animals. You can collect materials from them. They did say that there would be rare specimen, like, alt like altered color versions of these. I got to find the exact quote. But if they're shiny hunting, I'm I'm looking. You can you can be damn well sure I'm getting the rarest creatures that I could possibly find. Uh, one of each minion up to forty can roam free on the island, uh, and while they and they while away for hours wandering on the island, you may find they behave differently when left to their own devices. Curious to see what that ends up meaning, because I I just wonder if they would have gone out of their way to develop that many individual things that the different minions can do. Cozy Cabin is a basic facility. You can actually use your orchestrian roles here. And on top of that, the merchants that let you exchange your cowries is there. The workshop, the mammoths will create handicrafts with the materials obtained on the island. Uh, handicrafts automatically created by the mammoths on the staff at the workshop. Yeah, they'll just do it once you let them know. The granary, send teams of exploratory mammoths on foraging expeditions to get materials after choosing your desired expedition area and the number of days you wish your mammoths to forage. It will venture out to gather materials, returning once per day until the foraging expedition is over, so that you focus on more materials on the island itself. And it's possible to renovate the facilities to higher levels. Further explanations of island sanctuary features can be found as you realize your visions. Do the tutorials, in other words. Leaving, teleport, or use the boat that's there. Uh, also, if you are inactive for 30 minutes or more, you will be removed automatically, so you cannot AFK on your island forever. That probably means if you log off, you get kicked off the island. I think that's what that would also fall into. But I don't know, because 30 minutes is not like a traditional 10-minute duty kickout. So... Uh, that might just be something that's specifically because of Island Sanctuary being brand new content. Maybe they'll remove that at some point. Who knows? Uh, islands can have up to 16 players. So uh, they're just visiting your island. But you can't have a small party on your island with up to 16 people. A gathering, if you will. Uh, patch, as of patch 6.2, players will not be able to hear or catch your music when visiting another island. This will be made possible in a future update. I guess it's the way that it... Uh, probably the way that it handles how many islands there are because we know it's not exactly a duty or it doesn't perform exactly like other duty instances do you can queue in for stuff for example while you're on your island so it must do some form of instancing to reduce the server load and that might be why it doesn't allow you to properly hear them but they're they're working on it it sounds like uh visiting other islands um it's possible to speak with Balden and visit island sanctuaries even if you do not possess your own so even if a player is only done with the level 50 msq uh, which, you know, is way earlier than you can get the, the island, which is after the 90 MSQ. They can still visit them. So if you have friends who are new to playing and they want to check out the island, you can still show it to them. Permitted islands may visit the island sanctuaries of friends, free company members, and party members. Should be noted, the owner of the island must enable access for others to visit. Yeah, that's completely fair. And then, yeah, and once you have the island, once you get a sufficient rank, you can grant others access to your island. New objectives for attaining the island sanctuary have added to the challenge log. Didn't see that one coming, but uh, okay. Curious to see what the rewards are. New hairstyles have been added. All right, you got that uh, got that one ponytail in the back. New hairstyles added for female and male Vieira. You got the braids over on the on the left hand side, and uh, the braided pigtails, if anything. And then you've got just the short hair for the male Vieira. Oh, they fixed this hair. This hairstyle looked ridiculous on Hrothgar. Yeah, their ears come out of the side now. This one looks so ridiculous. <laughs> Both of these actually look super ridiculous on Hrothgar prior. But uh, yeah, now they have ears in those hairstyles. <laughs> oh man, I forgot how ridiculous they looked. With it. Oh man. Uh, duty support, uh, Snow Cloak Keeper of the Lake, Samal, the area in the vault were all added. And allied NPCs and duty support will now speak at certain points. So adding some more character interaction even to the old stuff. Uh, that's interesting. I guess they just decided it wasn't uh, interactive enough with these kind of no-name characters that you have throughout most of a Realm Reborn's uh, duty support. So they wanted to give them a little more personality. I'm cool with that. I like it. I, I felt like they already did a good job, so that just makes it a little bit better. Allied NPCs were not selected to accompany players in duty will no longer appear after completing the instance. Oh, yeah, okay. So they're saying that, like... If you have a choice of four NPCs and you bring three of them and the fourth one would still show up. No, they, so they, they don't want to take you out of it and just make it seem like the other NPCs caught up and they were just like late to the party or something like that. Okay, I get it, I get it. Following additions and adjustments have been made to Wondrous Tales, new prizes. Interesting. Now, that is a Heavensward mount, uh, which isn't that much of a surprise. We know that they added, you know, we have the pony from the Fox Commander that, uh, you know, it's kind of like another reskinned version of the Realm Reborn Trials. But I don't know if that's just one of the 
Heaven's Ward Extreme Trials? Because they're all just different colors. I'm colorblind. Or that's like a new one altogether. It kind of reminds me of the horse, the color scheme of the horse from the Fox Commander. So that's uh, that's interesting because this is under rewards for gold certs, silver certs, and bronze certs. Now, gold cert mounts usually end up in the Fox Commander at some point or another. So I wonder if this is just essentially a new Unreal reward. Uh... I mean, yeah, okay, cool. Um, I like the I like the horse, even though I know it's not a super popular one. I really like the birds, so I might pick this one up for myself after I sell one. Got to make that money. Fog duties have been added for Wonders Tales, Aglaia, and the Fell Court of Troia. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Fox Hollows. Speaking of which, Ultima's Bane has been replaced with Containment Bay S1T7. That is Sephiroth Extreme now Sephiroth Unreal, and uh, yeah, that's gonna keep rotating. <laughs> We did also get a new minion, it would appear, for Fox Age. So there is no new mount in the Fox Commander. At the very least, we've got a flying squirrel. <laughs> That's actually probably going to be a pretty popular minion. They're going to be very expensive coming from uh, from Unreal, from the Fox Commander. But uh, still, I think that's I think that's going to be a fairly popular minion. Character portraits have been implemented for battle dialogue for instance quests from the 4.x series. That seems like something they would have done when they go to update it, you know, with duty support, but I guess they just did it ahead of time to make it, uh, I, I guess, why wait if you can do it early, right? So don't wait till you actually change any of the, uh, the instances or, or any of the dungeons or anything. Yeah, okay, that's cool. I like it. New emotes, all right, cool. Using the draw emote while your weapon is sheathed will allow you to maintain a weapon drawn pose. Oh, okay, that's, a lot of people are gonna like that because a lot of people like that pose. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, just how it works. Scriptures of certain actions and status effects have been adjusted. They're not going to tell us about that yet. Following additions and adjustments have been made to the actions of trait window. Yeah, now you can have the compact view option, which shows combos. But you can also change it back to the old view if you want it. The recast timer displayed in the middle of actions can now be enlarged. Oh, thank God. It was way too small. <laughs> uh, yeah, big fan of that for visibility's sake. Size can be adjusted here. Awesome. It could be bottom left or it can be centered. I'm definitely going with centered. This is one of those things that's a direct result of uh, the add-on people asking for stuff. This is a very, very like long-term ask from people who have played World of Warcraft and use things like that. And we've seen a surge of it, a surge just coming from the add-on peeps. That's a result of that, and that's one that is very, very welcome. HP restoration over time will no longer generate enemy. Interesting. So ages ago this would have been a huge nerf to enmity maintaining now it doesn't matter that much because you know tank stance is so good what this does mean though is that if i regen a tank before they pull a group of enemies they're not going to all come after me as soon as as soon as it ticks so you can actually regen tanks now before they pull enemies in dungeons that's essentially that's the biggest thing it's used for also regening pre-pull in raids won't throw the boss off in any which way so there are actually quite a few benefits to that uh it, honestly with how easy enmity generation is it kind of just makes sense to do it this way i can't wait to hear people complain about how casual the game is because they don't pull aggro when they regen a tank before they run into a group of mobs anymore what a great conversation that's gonna be under effect, the chance to... Oh, this is the critical hit changes. Critical hit or direct hit actions that are guaranteed to land a critical or direct hit will now deal increased damage. This is essentially saying that if you're under the effect of something like Litany or Battle Voice and you have a guaranteed crit or direct hit, that you will instead do more damage. We still need to see how the balance works out. They said they were going to adjust skills with guaranteed crit or direct hits going into the patch. We'll see that on Monday. But this could either be game-breaking and making those jobs way too strong, or they could have done the math properly, and depending on your comp, it could average out to be roughly what it was before. A very, very fickle situation that I very much need to see how they handle it. Um, when executing actions that are guaranteed to land a critical or direct hit, they will now deal increased damage based on the direct hit rate and critical hit rate. It was already doing it based on the critical hit rate attribute. The direct hit rate attribute is the new thing. But remember, it's only attacks that guarantee critical or direct hit rates that will gain the benefit from direct hit rate itself. So if you just land a direct hit, your direct hit rate isn't increasing the damage. If you're a warrior though, and you use infuriate, and then you smack them with your guaranteed crit direct hit, now your direct hit stat is working on that guaranteed hit. So it does mean that warrior doesn't need to shy away from direct hit as a stat anymore, because the majority of their damage comes from guaranteed direct hits. So it should help with melding situation for warriors big time. We've been over that in the live letter prior before. 
Uh, location of enemies has been adjusted in Mordona and Mar Lamentorum. Okay, there are a few quests that are kind of annoying. I think there are some hunts that are very, very close to quests in both of those areas. I wonder if that's what they changed. Uh, Felcourt of Troya, the new dungeon's been added. 575, trust and duty support. It's part of the MSQ, uh, and it's from the quest as In Search of Asdaya, which is the first quest of the MSQ. So, very quick. Uh, item level sync has been added to the following duties. You know, Smile 10, Stigma Scape. Uh, Stigma Dreamscape. That's what it was called. Yeah, I got too used to calling it the Ligma Scape. I kind of forgot what its actual name was. Alza Doll's Legacy as well. New Trial, question mark, question mark, question mark, and question mark, question mark, question mark, extreme. Or maybe they'll call it Minstrel's Ballad, question mark, question mark, question mark, but we know it's the extreme version right here. Yeah, minute item level 600. This will drop an item level 615 weapon, almost assuredly, if they follow a pattern. So please look forward to it. After completing the main scenario quest, quest, yeah, Wandering Minstrel, yeah, it's a Minstrel's Ballad. Okay, I mean, that pretty much tells you that it is. It's extreme, but it's Minstrel's Ballad. Uh, then you get a totem, or, you know, what you can exchange for weapons, and eventually, patches down the line, I'm out. Sephiroth, Unreal, gonna be great. <laughs> Looking forward to it. That's part of the, you know, fantastic Mr. Fox. So, as long as you have that unlocked, you're good. Finally, the exchange for the uh, EX1 and EX2 mounts. I know that I still need this one, and I have 99 tucked away. Oh, wait, no, no. I'm sorry. Other way around. I have, uh, I, I need this one, and I have 99 tucked away. In fact, I have 114 of them tucked away, so looking forward to that. Pandemonium Abyssos, normal mode, 585 to enter. An unwelcome visitor will take you right into the first section, and then as you progress, you'll get to the rest. Has all the normal rules for normal mode. They haven't changed any of the loot or weekly restrictions. Uh, now, there's no weekly restriction on entering. That's very normal, but you can only get one thing from each, excluding the minion from the last fight, which you can win, or you can attempt to win as many times as possible. Uh, item exchange, this is the same thing that we went over before with the body, the legs, the head, hands, boots, and then, of course, the accessories with the ring. And, yeah, you'll also get that unsung blade. You get enough of those, seven of those. You'll be able to exchange it for a tombstone weapon. Uh, so, please save up. Raid Dungeon Savage, this will be added a week after normal mode at 1 a.m. Pacific. That's what I'm looking forward to big time. And Stone Sky C, the unlock quest and the item exchange will all become available then. So this particular section is a week delayed, so bear that in mind. And other than that, everything's the same, you know, 600, 605, 610, 610. It's pretty much expected minimum item levels, 90, 90, 90, 120, of course, for the last fight. And to require, if you've done Savage, none of this is a surprise. But if you haven't, I recommend reading through it real quick. Yeah, 630, 635, yeah, all the weapon coffers, all this stuff. It's all normal. This is all we'd predict. I'm glad they didn't bother hiding the fact that it's 630 and 635. Sometimes we have to wait until the items get added on Monday before we know for certain what the item levels are. Nah, here, they're just like, this is what the coffer is. Just leave me alone, all right? That's, <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah, and these do have a weekly reset. When you clear Savage for the week, whether or not you win loot, you're done. You can't get anything else. You can't qualify for loot anymore from that fight until weekly reset. But you will get a book, and you can save up the books and buy pieces with them. And they did just announce that they were nerfing some of the requirements. Head, hands, and boots are going from six books down to four. So it should mean less weeks to get loot, especially from that second floor. Uh, item exchange, that's what this is right here. Um, yeah, here it is. Head, hands, boots. And then, of course, you have the gladiator weapon, the regular weapons, you know, the body piece, you know, all the accessories and stuff. It means week four is going to be a huge week for some people. It's guaranteed two pieces and, uh, you know, halfway to some other pieces if you uh, if you should, should so need them. Following duties have added to the Raid Finder, Question Mark, Containment Bay, and Abyss of Savage. And then the old stuff was moved into the Duty Finder with Ensinger's Aria. Uh, players will now receive the power of the Echo in event that all players are incapacitated in Endsinger's Aria Extreme. That's normal. Following adjustments have been made to Aglaia. Weekly restrictions removed. We knew that was coming as well. Dragon Song's tokens are no longer weekly locked. We also saw that one come. These are all normal things if you've been here before. Uh, Gladiator's Arms and Shields yielded by Treasure Coffers will now appear together as a set item. Do they not already? I guess this is old ones, maybe? I could have swore that... Oh, wait a minute. But yielded by treasure coffers will now appear together as a set item. I guess they mean if it were to drop. So, so they're not referring to things like a weapon coffer. They're specifically referring to if gladiator weapons drop instead of two spots popping up, it's going to be one. Okay, yeah, that's good. This should have happened a long time ago. It's so silly that you can win the weapon and lose the shield or vice versa. So this is, this is how it should have been. This is a change that's long overdue. 
And uh, the title Wave Shield can no longer be obtained from Warlord. Oh. Oh, but you can, I mean, you can still get it. So players are going to receive the title wave, Sham Share, and Shield together. And okay, yeah. So you just have to do the exchange instead. Okay, whatever. Because uh, that was a cool shield, actually. Elegant Tome says of Causality, 450 capped, you know, hold up to 2,000 max. It's the same as every capped Tome Stone, nothing fancy. This just explains the changes to it. Otherwise, it's still completely identical. These are just all the adjustments. They just do an infograph instead of typing it all out every time because it pretty much works the same every single time just remember that yeah if you have not done your allegory and revelation exchanges uh before 6.2 do them uh if you have them at all because they're just going to be deleted so fair reminder for that and this is just in text everything that they set up here uh to these within the expert roulette there it is people are asking where's the level 90 roulette and i'm like well we have to wait till 6.2 and here it is. Yeah, our new expert is Alzadals and Felcourt. And then we get a level 90 roulette right here. And they also always increase the required average item level. This is something they also always do. So yeah, we have that extra roulette for the expansion. 100 uh, Astronomy, 15 Causality. There you go. Everyone's been wondering why they haven't mentioned it. And it's because it's expected at this point. Uh, duty Roulette Trials, the normal mode of this has been added. Steps of Faith has been removed because of the solo instance. Uh, alliance raids, Aglaia can now show up in your alliance raids. Let's be honest, you're just going to get Crystal Tower anyway, so who cares? And Duty Roulette Normal Mode will have 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th circle for Abyssos. Duty list for Mentor has been changed. Yeah, they just added in all the normal modes and, and the new trial and fell court. Yeah, once again, not a surprise. And then this is them just updating the Tombstone rewards. The, the ratio is always the same. It's just they need to update the old ones with the new ones, and that's, that's all they're doing. So if you've been around any other patch... That's all it is. It's just updating to the more updated tombstones for the rewards. Same with PvP. It's the exact same thing. And the hunt. All the section is is standard. Just nothing fancy. You'll just get capped tombstone, uncapped tombstone. It's just fixing all the names. Deep dungeons, Excitatron, goodness. Stone Sky C will get <clears throat> Abyssos. This is all normal mode. And then, of course, we have the trial. This is the extreme trial, by the way. And then uh, these will all be here in a week. Remember, you have to unlock those instances before their Stone Sky Sea Trials will open up. So when they become available, so, do, so does that. Total Rock apparently didn't have a shield for Gladiators and Paladins. Okay, I didn't remember that. And then they did make adjustments to all these boss battles. Here you go, Yeti. Fen so the Yeti, I expected. It's the Snowball boss. Uh, yeah, I fully expected that to be completely changed and streamlined. Fenrir, I wonder. Fenrir, I... I mm. I'm curious. Yeah, so, so they did a really good job with the adjustments to the early level dungeons. But these later level dungeons weren't as problematic. So I'm wondering what the adjustments actually end up looking like. Uh, I do know on Fenrir, people had a hard time hiding behind the icicle. It wasn't clear that you were supposed to hide behind the icicle. So that might be the only thing there. And the Yeti with the snowballs, that's going to be completely different. No way that's not completely different. But yeah, for like bosses like these, I'm surprised that there's adjustments on all of them because I wonder if it's just so the trusts can do them. It probably is just because the duty support needs to be able to do them. So their behavior and their mechanics need to be made more streamlined for their sake, I guess. I, I don't know. But yeah, all the dungeons adjustments. Definitely looking forward to that. The vault also got some positioning adjustments, but no boss adjustments, which I'm kind of glad to see. Thorn March we need to see as well. Oh, and here, here are the changes to Sephiroth. Extreme. Interesting. So these are not in line with what we were told by Yoshi P. Force Against Might and Force Against Magic will no longer be removed if the afflicted player's HP reaches zero. So what that would mean, by the way, is that if you were resurrected after dying to those mechanics, you'd come back up and essentially get be just a liability. That's a good change to make. There's really no downside to that. And the appearance of Sephiroth's Earthshaker attack has been adjusted to improve the visibility of its area of effect. So we were told that that Earthshaker would no longer be proximity-based and that the ads would be dialed back a little bit. And that's not what I read here at all. I mean, I guess the second one kind of falls in line with that, but maybe they made different adjustments or determined maybe those weren't the right adjustments to make. Uh, but this just seems like... Yeah, I guess the, the other changes were made. To, I don't know. It's weird because it's not in line with exactly what we were told. But it's also possible that since we were told those things that they made it's just a different outcome. I don't know. We'll have to see because I, I don't think they needed to change Sephiroth. I think even with any changes they would have made, it's still going to rock the party finder. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens when worlds collide. World of Darkness, the effect on destroying enemies has been adjusted. When destroying enemies... What? <laughs> Just what enemies? <laughs> no, 
when destroying enemies. Huh? Okay. Whatever. World of Darkness. I'm sure that won't affect much of anything at all. Uh, display of target indicators for certain battle mechanics has been adjusted. Some all the vault never reap world of dark. Oh yeah. So streamlining the, the markers so that if they, you yeah, know, so that they, they, they tell you what to do properly. Okay. That's good. They, this was a good thing in a realm reborn as well. Steps of faith has been revamped. We know that it will take longer for the screen to darken after a party KO during all trials and raid dungeons. So, uh, this actually backfired on Yoshi P during the recent live letter. He tried to die ahead of seeing one of Proto Carbuncle's attacks. <laughs> and uh, because of the elongated screen, he didn't die fast enough and we got to see one of the attacks go off. So we kind of know the theme of the fight already. Uh, but he's adding it to everything. So now he can screw he can screw that up anywhere he wants. I mean, this is still kind of okay. I'm, I haven't really cared that much about this like longer to darken thing. It's not bad, but it's just, it hasn't, it hasn't really mattered to me much at all it maybe gives me a second of extra time series one will end and series two will begin and there you go we have a mount for series two a dragon mount at that so there you go next pvp series has a mount i thought they were going to do a mount for this one i feel like they're going to do a mount for every other one and an armor set for every other one so series one three five etc will be armor and series two four six etc will all be mouse they might not do that but that's what my prediction was and this is in line with that so uh keep in mind that if you haven't uh claimed your series one rewards you still can until the end of the season however there's no mention of if you didn't earn them being able to get them now in a previous live letter yoshi p had mentioned that we'd be able to buy all series rewards eventually with the uh trophy crystals there's nothing here, so far at least, indicating that. Maybe if I scroll down, there will be. Uh, so if you miss Series 1, just know that the dev team has already addressed missing series and saying we'd get them down the line at some point. But we haven't had much information on that recently. So we don't know when they're going to be incorporating something like that. Uh, the difference here... Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. So the mount... What minions are those? Those look like mini cruise chasers. But there's like two back... What are those? Wait, okay, so we've got Framer Kits over here. We've got an emote, which is probably the emote we saw before here. Here's the Dragon Mount. What the heck are, the, are those? I can't... That didn't help. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're Cruise Chasers. <laughs> I think they are Cruise Chasers, but they're like both teams. They're like the 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 ones from from rival wings because this uh, yeah because these are the color schemes of the rival wings teams i guess that kind of makes sense they are they're the rival teams cruise chaser mounts i mean minions uh okay i'll take some cruise chaser minions uh crystalline conflict time remaining until chaotic party members are revival now appear i still kind of wish the amount of time so the return timer is still going to be frustrating because the amount of time it takes once a player's return timer hits zero that's probably when they go and respawn and then they do the whole respawn animation and that takes another like, you know, four to five seconds with the screen going black and everything. I kind of wish this was more of a revive timer, like when they would be fully alive. Uh, maybe it is and may maybe it's just not shown properly, but I'm under the impression this is just when they're going to be sent back and then they do the respawn animation and everything. So uh, players can now view adventure plates of the opposing team by selecting opponents on the party list and using well there goes some of my matches people are gonna be like oh sorry i sorry i died in that last match i was looking at the opponent's adventure plates i mean fine okay following additions and adjustments have been made to quick chat uh job names will now be displayed when using quick chat commands okay that's good and uh, executing a limit break and everyone group up can't wait for people to not use these that's fine following adjustments have been made to ratings yeah you can you can demote from diamond to platinum and crystal to diamond we knew that range of tiers used has been adjusted uh further adjustments will be made to according to player counts in each tier yeah so you might end up with players outside your matchmaking norms if it's taking too long to get a match uh prevent manipulation of matchmaking the algorithm has been adjusted and they've added penalties for matchmaking uh when withdrawing when, when a match is found a penalty would be incurred starting from the first time a player withdraws. The penalty is only applicable to registration for ranked matches and will not affect the duty finder. Nah, you should just make it for everything. <laughs> no, I understand because some people end up wanting to go into a match and they need to back out. But just make it for everything. Just go ahead. It's fine. Withdrawing mid-match. Uh, 
penalty. I think this is the main reason they do it is because people sometimes people PvP while they're waiting for the raid to get together and the raid gets together and then it pops, but they don't want to hold the raid back. I get it. I get it. Withdrawing mid-match, a penalty to rank matchmaking will be incurred. A penalty uh, will also be applied to the duty finder. Yeah, that makes sense. Season 2 and will Season 3 will begin. Uh, so we know they're eventually making changes to the seasonal rewards, but from what I understand, this is still just the framer kits and whatnot for the various rankings. It'll just have a 3 on it instead of like a 1 or a 2 for the previous tiers. A-OK, okay, that's fine. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do eventually with seasonal rewards because they did say they were going to look to amp them up a little bit. Uh, all tiered players will begin at season to begin this season at bronze three with zero risers. Yeah, everyone goes right back to the bottom with the adjust with the additions of demotions and adjustments. Uh, players will compete for rankings based on their highest achieved tier. Yeah, so this was we derived this from the live letter. But yeah, it's whoever has the highest crystal credit score by the end of the season and not who's actually in first by the end of the season. So uh, we, we had derived that, but, you know, they just outright say it here. Yeah, portraits, achievements, and titles for all tiers and ranks up to and including their final standing. This is retroactive for people in Season 1 Ugh. and Season 2, from what I understand. And, uh, yeah, I can go back and retroactively get them now, so I have all of them. Crystalline Conflict ranking page on the load zone for Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond tiers will now always be sorted by victories. Okay. Hidden Gorge has been brought back for Rival Wings, and they have a number of adjustments. Mount Speed has been increased, I like that. Tank, Monk, Samurai, Reaper, Modifier for damage taken has been changed from 20% to 30%, so they all got buffs, uh, it looks like. Dragoon and Ninja Modifier has been changed from 15% to 30%. Okay, wait, damage... I gotta make sure I'm reading this correct. Damage taken. Okay, I gotta make sure, because they might, like, change it to damage dealt at some point. All right, so yeah, these are all 30%. All the melees, including the tanks, are 30%. Physical range DPS are going to be 15%. Red Mage modifier has been changed from 10% to 15% as well. All right, yeah, so range have a 15% damage modifier, and melee have a 30%. So melee should take 30% less damage, and range take 15% less damage. Okay. Flying high status has been adjusted. The potency of it, HP and actions of War Machina have been adjusted. All of the Rival Wings things adjusted. That's, that's what I'm reading here. Even the action... Excuse me, the actions of the steam cannons have been adjusted. Potency of HP over time effects granted by the tower defense has been adjusted. Damage over time from the magic fields has been adjusted. The damage threshold required to obtain goblin mercenaries has been adjusted. Lots of adjusting. Either way, we need to play it to see how it ends up feeling. If it still just feels like, oh, this is Hidden Gorge and I'd rather not do that. Or if it's like the PvP changes themselves, the actual job changes, make the mode a little more fun. We'll see. Yeah, we have our raid items, of course, you know. Oh, and look, they, they added a view from the back so you can see the rings properly and you can be just as depressed about Bard. Uh, <laughs> every other job feeling real cool. Bard being like, sure glad the other sets look cool. <laughs> sure glad everyone else, sure glad the other weapons look cool. Yeah, and then it's the same here. Uh, I really like, these are the new crafting recipes. And I'm a big fan of the, it's almost like this high noble slash pirate like mix. I'm a huge, by the way, it took me forever to realize this is a samurai. That is a dope samurai because I didn't see the hilt at first. So I thought like, oh, is that just a really long ninja sword? No, that's, I love that. That's just, that's great. I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of, of that. Um, but yeah, every, everyone looks good here. Man, it just makes me depressed. I don't like this bard bow. <laughs> It's okay, but compared to everyone else's, yeah. And okay, yeah. There we know that there's also new tombstone gear. I wonder if that's just further down. Players can now preview the contents of certain. Of course, they would use the two B coffer for why? Why would they use anything else? Is it as they were like, mm, it's whatever. Yeah, you can now see everything that's inside. That's good. I, I I like that. That's good information to have. Following item names have been changed. Imitation. Okay. Well, Shuffle or boogie shadowbringers. I like that one. Uh, let's see. Falling items can now be equipped regardless of gender. Far Eastern set, Eastern sets, the Mungek set. Uh, there you go. A bunch of now genderless sets, so everyone can glam as they please. Capacity of the Glamour Dresser has been doubled. We knew that. Moonward gear is now purchasable for nuts. This is very normal because the tombstone you purchased them with has been removed, so now they're from the nut exchange. Sky Builder scripts have new items. Uh, certain new items can be sold, desynthesized, or submitted for experts. That's, again, normal. Uh, maximum store for crafters and gatherer scripts has been doubled. That's really nice. I know a bunch of people who hate sitting at 2,000 on that, so I'm a big fan of that. Uh, new recipe requiring sufficient level of quality to complete the synthesis has been added. Yeah, okay, that's just new recipes added. New master recipes, a master recipes tab has been added. That's really good. 
Uh, new minor and botanist gathering points have been added. New items have been added to gathering. Gathering attempts and integrity bonuses have been added to legendary nodes. To certain ones, probably the previous ones, if I had to guess. Botanists and miners now discover prime collectibles when gathering. Prime collectible items have reached a maximum collectability will that have reached a maximum collectability will on occasion become sublime collectibles when gathered. A high gathering rating increases your chance. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then ethereal reduction of prime collectibles yields rare items. Oh, boy. Gatherers got some content. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Prime, it would be very sublime if you had a Prime Gaming sub if you use it on my Twitch channel. Just saying. The collectibles gathering window has been adjusted. Okay, I don't see it all too often, but, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, no, I can still see the difference. Okay, there's a few things here. New fish can be used for ethereal reduction have been added. New varieties of fish have been added. Level cap for desynthesis has gone up. New mounts. These are all from Island Sanctuary. 12,000 of the blue, the blue cowries. I keep calling them scripts. The blue cowries. Uh, so that's 36,000 across all three mounts. Following adjustments have been made to the mount guide. Oh, now displays 30 on a single page. And the number of favorites has also gone up to 30. And up to six mount actions can now be displayed at once when riding a mount. Up to six? What did you add that has six? <laughs> They had to have added something that has that many for it to have that many. So, uh, okay. That's a lot. New Chocobo Barding added. Cool. New Minion. That's also from Island Sanctuary, or that a shadow of a doubt. Minion Guide also had that increase, the UI from 25 to 30. New accessories. We got new wings here. We saw those in the preview before. New actions with umbrellas. We saw that as well. Players can use emotes while using fashion accessories. Cool. Special actions have been added with fashion accessories can be confirmed in the fashion accessory window. There you go. It'll have the actions if it, if it has them. And system. Following adjustments have been made to data center travel time. The waiting time to retrieve information has been reduced, so they're just improving it a little bit, but that's still going to vary depending on world congestion. Players can now receive notifications for letters from friends and GMs even when visiting other worlds within their data center. Uh, that's nice. For letters containing bonuses or purchased items, you must be in your home world. You know, the more we see them kind of break that barrier down with little things that otherwise have been restricted, it feels more and more like we're moving towards, you know, just full accessibility for everything everywhere. I don't know how they'd eventually do that, but I mean, we didn't, I didn't think this was something they'd be able to fix even or change and they have. So maybe it'll keep improving. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Long additions and adjustments have been made to retainers. New items from Quick Adventures, from New Retainer Exploration Ventures, and the error message displayed when attempting to entrust retainers with a unique item already in their possession has been adjusted. Okay. Long additions adjustments made to achievements. New achievements have been added, and they added new duties to the tanking achievements. They do this every single time. Official adventure plates. They got rid of a bunch of the jank. They made some additions. A portrait specifically for adventure plates has been added. New portrait accents have been added. Search comments can now be edited directly when editing adventure plates. There you go. And then this just goes through everything. Uh, they they went over this in a live letter, but essentially they've they've just made it a little less confusing to use. That's all. And a little less janky to use as well. Now with the full release. It does mean, however, all of your plates, except for the one that is tied to your... Oh, I'm sorry. All of your portraits, except for the one currently tied to your adventure plate when the patch goes live... They'll all be deleted. Take screenshots of the settings and remake them should you desire to, but make sure you're prepared for that in advance. The official release of portraits, there you go, has been added. Portraits can be edited from the main menu after unlocking gear sets, are allotted one portrait for every gear set created. All settings other than equipped gear could be copied. New portrait motions have been added. New portrait accents have been added. The display of requirements for framer kits has been adjusted. And then this just goes over all the editing and what not. Portraits that meet the following criteria will be marked with a warning symbol. These portraits must either be edited or restored. And never been edited prior to 6.2. Portraits whose gear set makeup and change has been overwritten. Portraits that no longer match your character's appearance after using a file. I thought this was going to be like a stop making horny adventure plates warning. That's not what it is. So, moving on. Copying settings. Possible to copy settings other than equipped gear to other portraits. Okay. Players can now request gear repairs. Time to save a bunch of time by being the guy who repairs everyone's gear. Please. Oh, wait. Does it say gear durability? Making requests. Okay, I need to see this. Select the player whom you wish to send the request and request the repair. After, com after confirming the request, select a player can repair your gear. 
quantity for request gear list. Required dark matter. Here's where it is. The, re the repair request menu will display the number of dark matter to be consumed as well as the number owned by the player who will repair the gear. If the player conducting repairs has insufficient dark uh, matter of the required grade, a higher grade will be consumed. Okay. Uh, a higher grade will be consumed. So it's saying that the person doing the repairing needs to have the dark matter. Okay. I was wondering if that was going to be the case because uh, I was worried about people requesting repairs but not having dark matter and thus... It's like they're like, well, I never repair for myself. Why would I have dark matter? But it does mean that now I got to have more dark matter on me. So y'all lazy motherfuckers need to be paying me back for the like 10 guild that that costs. All right. That's all there is to it. In order to prevent server congestion immediately, we will be implementing multiple field instances of lower Lenosha. That makes sense. They do. Island Sanctuary is entered from lower Lenosha if memory serves. And there's probably some other things that happen there as well. So I think that's fair. Following additions and adjustments have been made to the currency window. An option to select the default currency displayed on the HUD has been added. I like this. Uh, order in which the cycle of the HUD can be adjusted via the arrow buttons. Okay, I like the customization for this. I'm a fan. New dungeons are available via Explorer mode. Wow, they added a lot. I mean, this, oh, look at all the hard mode dungeons from A Realm Reborn. Look at all this. Even Falcon, And then, of course, Falcord of Troy gets it. Look at all these A Realm Reborn dungeons. Look at all the, look at all the Explorer mode dungeons right there. Okay. I like it. I like taking, like, screenshots and doing videos in Explorer Mode dungeons. People always ask me, like, where are you? How are you doing this? I was like, I just used Explorer Mode. Oh, well, I went from something I was excited about to this. The duties that can be recorded have changed. Thanks. Thanks a lot. The promote the promote to a cross-world link shall master subcommand has been added. Okay. When changing a following search criteria in the Party Finder window, a confirmation prompt will now be displayed when selecting Cancel without saving your settings. Thank God, because I do that way too frequently for my own good. Following adjustments have been made to the subcommand menu for character selection. Delete character subcommand has been moved. They're making it harder to find because they don't want you doing it by accident. Uh, and then the confirmation prompt displayed when selecting options subcommand menu has been adjusted. Yeah, Ivy, is that good? The, uh, to improve support for color blindness, the color of areas marked on the map. Okay, let me see here. This is before. This is, yeah, that's, uh, that'll do. <laughs> this one on the right. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. These other ones is a little bit more, but it's really the one on the right. The one on the right is the, is the huge, huge difference. Aloha. I'm in the middle of something. Hey. You're not even on camera. Come on, buddy. Selecting an option in a drop-down list that allows scrolling the position of the cursor when reopening the drop-down list has been adjusted to display the previous and next options. Following adjustments have been made to the prompts for accepting friend requests. Uh, accept, wait, and decline. When choosing to respond to a friend request via the friends list tab, the accept friend request subcommand has been changed to respond to friend requests. How about we just make the friend request better as a whole? Um, because, man, does that thing suck. <laughs> how about we just we, this of all the ui things you need to rework you need to rework this like that needs to take a priority at some point hey aloha say hey, no no being a menace stop the desk is not for you i'm putting my foot right here no 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 i'm blocking you with my foot as uncomfortable as this is you cannot go there there you go Following features have been implemented to improve graphics processing. Yeah, so they have the process optimization. Frame rate when under higher GPU load has been improved. They also have dynamic resolution, which has been added as well, which is going to allow you to change. Don't use my foot as a springboard, Aloha. Um, it, which means that if your uh, game is coming under duress and your performance is being hit, it can dynamically lower the resolution of your game. Aloha, I swear. Aloha! Hey, no, come here. Stop. No. No. Oh, now you're now you're Mr. Sneezy. Now you're Mr. Sneezy. We're taking you to the vet and you're getting in the middle of my recording, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. He's had sneezies. He starts they start as coffees. I think he's just got a lot of mucus. We're taking him to the vet tomorrow. So you're going to hear him sneezing for a little bit. There he goes. Sneeze it up. Get get the mucus out, buddy. We're taking you to the vet tomorrow. Okay. Anyway, we got <laughs> we got to finish the recording. Poor Aloha. And Ivy just ditches. <laughs> Ivy's like, I don't want anything to do with whatever's going on with him. Aloha. Here. Pets. Pets. There you go. 
There you go, pal. Yeah, Ivy's like, Ew. Back to my recording. Never mind. Aloha, you still got some sneezes in there? Little cat sneezes? Yeah, he heard vet and he was just out. Anyway, <laughs> following options have been added to character configuration. Dynamic resolution, which we just discussed. Um, following options have been added to the character configuration menu. Uh, display. Oh, this is the recast timers thing. Okay. Game credits will now include their release date and controls and navigations for staff credits have been improved. Good, because they were not good before. Steam overlay will now appear when loading the game via Steam. Okay. Following text commands have been added slash spirit. It would appear that's from the Series 2 rewards. It looked like it was like a rank 5 reward or something like that. There you go, buddy. Additions have been made to the Auto Translate Dictionary. Additions have been made to the PlayStation 4 and 5 Auto Dictionary. New trophies, new music, and sound effects. And with that, we have found the end of the patch notes. Now, keep in mind, there will be more stuff in the full patch notes on Monday, including PvE and PvP job adjustments that they are going to be making. Sometimes there are other details that they add later as well. And there's usually known issues and resolved issues at the bottom. So we will do a separate video on that. Overall... Standard patch notes, most of the stuff we already know about, we're already looking forward to, plus looking forward to quite a few things in patch 6.25, especially Criterion Dungeons and the Manderville Weapon Quest for me, as well as the Hildebrand Quests themselves in patch 6.25. Anyway, that is going to be a wrap for this overview on the live letter. Aloha and Ivy both send their regards, and boy he Boyo here is going to the vet tomorrow. Yeah, you're going to the vet tomorrow, isn't that right? Hey, do I have any of these left for you? Hey, do I have any of these left for you? Yeah, here. Hey, buddy, before we wrap up the video, hey, you want you want this fish head? Hey, come here. You want the fish head? Yeah, eat the fish head. For the end of the video, just eat the fish. No, the fish head's still here. There you go. There you go. Dried fish heads. He's a big fan of dried fish heads. Well, they're dried fish, but there was only a head attached there. Anyway... Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for all news and information for Final Fantasy XIV. Be on the lookout for extreme guides, normal mode guides, savage guides, all that good stuff that you enjoyed with 6.0. Be enjoying with 6.2 as well. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, 